so let's get started with the sample question what we'll suggest is pass the video right you'll see the passage till this part we have two paragraphs right then we have a question following it you read the passage try to understand it then select the answer pass the video so that you'll get time to read it don't have a time limit right now that's completely fine mark your answer then continue the video where we will discuss this in depth so i hope you have passed the video we have read the text you have answered the question now let's try to discuss this so what we try to do with this passage we have intentionally picked slightly complex thing and a topic which we are not very you know uh, used to read it's more on the philosophy talking about human nature and stuff so let's dive deep dive into the text first to read and understand it and then let's look at the question and see what could be the potential answer right so every age has its pet contradictions so due different time frames 1900s 1800s you know different generations you'll have some contradictions happening at that time with philosophies and theories so a few decades back we used to accept marx and freud together then wonder like the chameleon on the turkey carpet why life was so confusing right so it, they're talking about an example of few years back where the different philosophies were existing people were accepting it and then people are still you know asking a bigger question about life that why is life so confusing today there is a similar trouble over the question whether there is or is not something called human nature so the author has explained this example about how few decades back right different ideologies or theories philosophies were existing and that similar behavior we are seeing again now and the topic that the author picked for this is that human nature there are two different theories or multiple theories which are contradicting but they are still existing so let's try to understand what those theories are on the one hand there has been an explosion of animal behavior studies comparisons between animals and men have become immensely popular right so the author says on one hand there have been you know a lot of studies happening on animal behavior and basically we also would have heard about this where like this is human nature like humans are social beings or we try to look at other animals of similar families apes or anything or maybe animals as in general and then you know justify human behavior saying that we behave so and so because that is human nature that's human behavior that's how we are bound to behave right so people use evidence from animals to decide whether man is naturally aggressive or naturally territorial or even whether he has an aggressive or territorial instinct right just continuing with the same point which i was discussing moreover we are still much influenced by freudian psychology which depends on the notion of instinct right so this is all then i see on the other hand so that's like taking to the other argument of a different philosophy but if you just summarize this one philosophy it's basically talking about people who believe that animal behavior you know and human behavior is sort of similar to some other animals or in general as a whole animal world so naturally aggressive naturally territorial so we have instincts we have something you know that's passed down to humans which we can't do much about and that's why we behave in so and so patterns on the other hand right many still hold what may be called the blank paper view you know this is the other argument or the other other contradicting philosophy the man is a creature in, entirely without instincts so this theory blank paper view says that man is a creature entirely without any instincts so do ex existentialist philosophers so if you don't know what existentialist philosophy is uh i mean just just try to you know sometimes it's very much possible that you don't get things which you really know so we just have to try to guess things and sort of you know skip it or try to just make a intelligent guess based on how things are going but generally the existential uh, philosophy existentialism philosophy basically says that humans are you know born without any instincts per se they have free will uh they develop themselves their thoughts whatever a, a person a particular person behavior and all comes from his own you know decisions throughout his life based on what he has undergone and what he has seen there's nothing like human by default is born with something like this that's why the behavior is so and so 
so the existential is um basically argues that there is nothing like instinct or anything humans are born with zero people experience different things so they decide things on their own and they behave in particular pattern based on what they have undergone or what they have believed or what they have built so it's something similar to the blank paper you basically that's why we get to see both uh, you know that's an intelligence guess you do like so do existentialist philosophers and that's like basically saying that the blank paper you goes along with the existentialist philosophers if man has no instincts all comparison with animals must be irrelevant right so both these simple party lines have somewhat eroded over time but both are exist- extremely influential so this is basically saying that there are two arguments and they are still influential so now the author continues talking about the blank paper view in the next passage paragraph according to the blank paper view man is entirely the product of his culture so that's like saying that man is born as zero it's a blank paper whatever he is you know evolved into up every human being basically is product of his or her culture he starts off infinitely plastic and is formed completely by the society in which he grows up the same point being reiterated there is no end to the possible variations among cultures so again the author says like all the humans within the cultures do not you know behave in the same way exactly in the same way because there are different possible variations among the cultures and all so there is still some scope of different behaviors developing in different cultures and stuff like that what we take to be human instincts are just the deep dug prejudices of our own society so here the argument is in favor of blank paper you basically saying whatever we consider as the human instincts right are basically the deep dug prejudices of our own society so it's basically deep uh, you know deeply inside the society behavior so everyone is getting to see the same behavior coming because we are all growing in societies forming families fearing the dark and jumping at the sight of a spider are just the results of our conditioning so it's again arguing the same thing that we might feel that okay humans have fear of dark in general that's because that's human behavior or something our forming families is part of human behavior right our jumping at the sight of a spider are just the results you know are part of no this argument of blank paper you says that these are not part of our uh, instincts or something like that these are just part of our conditioning we are grown are we growing with these thoughts in our mind that okay we are bound to form families i am supposed to get married i am bound to form families and etc existentialism at first appears a very different standpoint because the existentialist asserts man's freedom and will not let him call himself a product of anything so this point basically says that existentialism says everyone has a freedom right whatever the behavior that shapes up in a person is basically based on his experiences and his own understanding and his own will power so if you look at the first part of this blank paper you it says that it's entirely product of the culture it's sort of blaming or putting the role of an external party that's society and culture that's shaping our humans behavior in a way which is what the existentialism will not agree and that's what the author says at at first appears a very different standpoint because existentialist assets man's freedom and will not let him call himself product of anything that's basically in a way the blank paper you saying that we are product of our society and culture but existentialism too denies that man has a nature so that's basically existentialism also denies that we have instincts or human nature which is you know uh, given to us over generations or something like that if he had his freedom would not be complete so if he had a nature or uh, you know instincts that is certain behaviors are set by his by birth as a human we would bound to behave in such a way if that is existing then his freedom would not be complete that's what the argument is so thus satre insisted that there is no human nature man first of all exists encounters himself surges up in this world surges up is grows in this world and defines himself afterwards so that's basically again continuing saying that satre insisted that there is no human nature no instincts man exists first of all encounters himself sees things experiences things grows in this world and defines himself based on his experiences and what he has seen in life if man as as the existentialist sees him is not definable it is because to begin with he is nothing so it's basically as we have been talking that all these theories of existentialism blank paper you says that man does not have any nature or does not come pre-programmed in any way is born as nothing as a zero 
and he will grow and you know build things his behavior his attitudes as he grows up he will not be anything until later and then he will be what he makes himself right he will not be anything until later and then he will be what he makes himself so that's again continuation of the same logic for existentialism there is only the human condition which is what happens to man and not what he is born like so again the same point being discussed that existentialism there is only human condition that is how he is growing what he is experiencing which is what happens to him and not what he is born like there is nothing to do with he is born with something something like that if we are afraid of the dark it is because we choose to be cowards cowards if we are care more for our children than for other people it's because we choose to be partial right so these points so this argument continues saying that the fear of darkness you know uh, love towards our own family etc is not instinct or human nature or animal behavior it's more about how we have decided to be something like being partial etc right so this theory starts to justify all these things saying that it is nothing to do with the nature instinct or anything it's just that we have decided to do so and so that's how the society is behaving or maybe we are conditioned or we have decided to do on our own we must never talk about human nature human instincts this implicit moral notion is still very influential not at all confined to those who use the metaphysic of essence and existence right this is a slightly complex line uh, so it says that metaphysic of essence and existence you know this is metaphysics is also metaphysic is also another philosophy so that's where you know there is the mixer of the reality and the you know uh, abstractness of the world so it's slightly complex to discuss but let's continue ahead so i shall sometimes speak of it not as existentialist but as a libertarian meaning that those holding it do not just like all of us think liberty important but think it supremely important believe that our having a nature would infringe it right so let's read this line again so i shall sometimes speak of it not as existentialist but as libertarian so the author is saying that sometimes i speak of it not as existentialist but as libertarian so there are two different philosophies libertarian is about having freedom you know that's a philosophy that i am i should have freedom to decide what to do and etc so it says sometimes so i speak of not as existentialist so author is sort of giving a hint that he is an existentialist but he is not arguing sometimes as existences but more of a libertarian meaning that those who those holding it do not just think liberty is important but think it is supremely important and believe that our having a nature would infringe it so here the author continues saying that if as i said libertarian or liberty uh, philosophy is basically saying that the person should have freedom to do whatever he wants he or she wants so it says that if we have nature which is passed down to us as humans right it is sort of stopping us from having complete freedom to do if let's say the nature says i mean human nature instinct says that i am bound to get married and have kids right that is how the humans should behave but that is sort of stopping me from having my freedom to decide what do what i want to do so that is what the author is saying that sometimes not as existentially just as a libertarian right i feel that it is supremely important to have freedom and believe that our having a nature would infringe it infringe it is basically that i would not i would be deprived of having my freedom right it would be crossed so yeah that's how the passage is it's super difficult to read or at least i would put it at a difficult level not super uh, unless you are into psychology understand the philosophies and stuff uh, right so let's get to look at the question now what i will suggest is pass the video again and try and see if you want to change your answer because i have now explained this whole passage i guess you would have a better understanding of things if you did not have complete understanding earlier right so you can rethink the question and answer this question again after what we've discussed till now so i guess uh, you have passed the video and have checked the you know options again and have selected whatever the right answer you felt is the right answer so let's look at the question which of the following statements would the author agree with most right so you see the options existentialism existentialism and liberty so sort of three options i see on the same line so let's read them existentialism can be extended to libertarianism that's one which sounds like a decent option for me now 
look at the next existentialism libertarianism are the same which is a bit extreme i don't agree with this why because the author says so i shall sometimes speak of it not as existentialist but as a libertarian so it says like existentialism and libertarian are slightly different at least if not i at least can confidently say that they are not the same even if you don't understand what existentialism is and libertarian libertarianism is from just this line so i shall speak sometimes speak of it not as existentialist but as a libertarian if they are same then the author will not make this line right so at least i can eliminate it based on this line the d option says liberty and existentialism are unrelated this also looks a bit you know uh, not really going along with this point of as i explained existentialism is basically the philosophy of how human's nature is shaped up based on his experiences he has the freedom to develop in his own life his or own life but through will power and experiences they decide how they shape their behavior liberty libertarianism basically says to have liberty or the freedom to do what they want in life so there is sort of some relation and this line also gives us that right a bit of that supremely important to have the liberty is very important and it is supremely important if it is if we are having nature a human nature part of our life it sort of influences this so i'm not really convinced on this part but let's keep this aside right i will still go with a but let's keep a and d now animal behavior should not be compared with human behavior you know this the author you know this is a trap okay it might look like here there are two two theories one theory says that animal behavior you know compared with human behavior and all of that the blank paper you sort of makes us feel that you know it should not be compared but here we do not clearly know whether the author is completely arguing in favor of blank paper you are is like you know like the blind follower of it i would say this is sort of a complex option to select it because we do not have a direct claim at any point of uh, you know place in the passage where the author is sort of saying that he completely believes in blank paper you he is rather putting that there are two arguments are two philosophies which are contradicting and it's sort of both are influential and it's sort of contradicting you know that's why we cannot select this option so i would go with the a option a existentialism can be extended to libertarianism because there is a little bit of overlap like as i said if you understand existentialism and libertarianism you'll find the option a to be more convincing the option d is our unrelated sort of makes it you know unrelated is the word which i am not convinced about right they are a bit related that's what even the author is trying to say in the last line so you know to answer this question actually you don't need to really look through everything given if you understand the last two lines clearly with a good sense of what's the whole passage about i think you can answer this question but yeah what i wanted to show in this is this the options might look like easy to understand the question might look very easy to understand what the question is talking about but if you don't really understand the passage you find everything very complex and complicated to really attempt right that is what i wanted to show in this passage